Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Good. Good. Wasn't yesterday great? Absolutely. Just, just made you, just, it just made you think it's over. It was a real teaser. And it was windy. Woo. It was a hold on to your hat day. That's Fred. <laughs> That's right. I got my hat and I left it up on the ground. So it, I trust y'all had a good week. And uh, we had some fog this week. We had a little bit of everything, haven't we? Rain. Did we have any snow this week? I don't think we had any snow. What's that? Now up in Concordia, they got a lot more snow than we got because Friday night we drove up there. That's a whole other story. Huh? Last Sunday we had snow. Yeah, last Sunday we had snow. So yeah, that was. Yeah, we hit all four seasons. That's what I like about Kansas: the variety. It's the spice of life. So, and how many are on spring break? <laughs> the kids are like, the teachers are like, that's good, that's good. Well, we, we, I know the last Sunday the weather was kind of wild, Saturday night and Sunday, and, and so, uh, uh, but we still had a, a good crowd. I was, I was really surprised when all the churches, basically in the county, uh, maybe not all of them, but almost all of them closed down because of the weather. Uh, we stayed open and had a good time and uh, started off a new series, which we're going to review a little bit later on, and then uh, I'm going to present some new stuff for you to chew on today. But uh, right now, if there are some announcements, if you want to make your way forward, uh, share those with us, and then uh, we'll commence to get after it. Here this morning, a couple of wedding uh, showers are going to be coming up. The first one we're going to have is for Cassidy Bliss. She is the bride elect of Jeremy Hett, and we're going to be having a Cameron Chef party for her. There'll be a brunch on the remember um, Saturday, March 23rd at nine o'clock over in the Fellowship Hall. You don't need to bring a gift; uh, just bring your checkbook. She'll pick something out of the book, and you just pay for it. So it's pretty easy. If you would like to order something for yourself, you can do that also, and then she gets credit for that, so she gets more free stuff. You can do that. Also, we're going to have an I Do Barbecue for Tori and Amber, and that will be on Sunday, March 31st, after Sunday school. We'll have a hot dog feed that day. And we're asking for gifts for them, for their family, um, just out outdoor activities, games, that sort of thing. And Amber said they put a couple of things on their um, registries, which are Target and Walmart. So if you see something on there, do you think they would like, you can go ahead and, and uh, get those for them. If, if you can't be at uh, Cassidy's shower and you want to get something kind of for Chef, I have catalogs here if you'd like to look at one or uh, if you want to look at something for yourself. I do have several catalogs, so if you're interested, come see me at the church. And then one last thing. Uh, Sorry, it's kind of helping the guys out here a little bit with the beast That's feast. That's okay, we just need the help. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and send around a sign up. If you could do a roaster of cheesy potatoes, ladies, that would be great. I know we had three people mention they would do it last week, but I'm not sure who. So if you could go ahead and sign up for that, that'd be great. And there's a recipe here to help you out with that also. So you can take that if you sign up. And then just kind of a heads up, I think we have four roasters here. So if you don't have a roaster and you'd like to make them, uh, let me know and we can get you uh, signed up for one of those. All right. And Feast Feast, next Saturday, 530. Uh, at the County Lake Hall, and uh, it's going to be a good time. And the tickets went fast. I, I have a few extra. So, uh, and when I mean a few, I mean like maybe five or six. And, and so uh, just, just be mindful of that. 
Uh, a lot of good prizes. We went out yesterday. Uh, a couple of us went out and uh, got some more stuff. And so uh, uh, it's, it's going to be a good time. And the guys are, I can tell, they're getting the recipes out and sharpening their knives and, and getting ready to put on the, the big feast. That reminded me. I'm going to be decorating for the Beast Feast um, next Saturday about 1 o'clock we'll probably start. So if anyone would like to help, that would be great. Um, if you have, I know Jerry usually brings a box of antlers. If you have anything, um, pheasant feathers or anything like that that we could use, uh, that would be great. I was just going to say I'm going to try to get the lake all opened up about 9 or 9 30 Saturday morning. Anybody wants to come help set up tables and chairs. Okay. And uh, we're going to, uh, several of us can meet on Friday sometime. Uh, probably, I'm going to guess around maybe 6 o'clock, we'll meet over at the lake hall just to do a, a outside walk around to see how we want to set up. We might be setting that up a little different this year uh, if, if, the, uh, if we can get it worked out logistically. So uh, we're trying to get the food from the grill right to you a little quicker, okay? Uh, so that when you take a bite of that bobcat, it... <laughs> It's fresh off the grill, so. <laughs> Don't move your eyes, it's... <laughs> until you try it. <laughs> All right, so uh, there, there is that announcement. Uh, also, on the back of your bulletin, coming, coming events, um, uh, March 15th through the 17th, the Women's Encounter, and you can talk to Tina. There's still time to get in on that? It's full. It's full. So, if you didn't get in, you look at that announcement and say, wow, I should have got in. So, if you can deal with your regret or whatever you have to deal with, we'll pray for you. Um, and then the 17th is the Sojourners class has the services at Peabody Health and Rehab. And then March 27th uh, at 7 o'clock, from 7 to 7.30 here in the morning, uh, that morning, we'll be having uh, the Lenten breakfast. And uh, we, we invite everybody out for that. It started this past Wednesday, and we met at the Valley Church. And, uh, and so uh, just to mark your calendars for that, it's a pretty good way to start off your day. Uh, everybody comes here and, and uh, shares a breakfast together. Uh, there's a free will donation bucket there, and all of that money, I believe, goes into the Ministerial Alliance because the Ministerial Alliance uh, in Marion helps, uh, uh, we help out transients that are passing through and may be a meal or a room for the night, or we help uh, people in our local community uh, sometimes, you know, they get a little behind on their bills, and so we help with utilities and, and those kind of things. And we have stacks of gas cards that we help people uh, that are behind on the, and they just don't have enough money for gas, and we get them a gas card uh, from Ampride. So, uh, Ministerial Alliance does a lot of good, and uh, so that's what the <coughs> uh, offering goes toward, and then that. On that particular day, I will have a short devotional and have you out of here at 7.30 on the notes. Some of you look doubtful about that, but trust me. And, uh, and so there's a list of things, uh, and we have a late Easter this year, April 21st. So we're in the Easter tide season, and we uh, just invite you to just uh, join us, be a part of uh, um, those events that are going on. If there's no other announcements, Administrative Council tomorrow night. Yes. Administrative Council tomorrow night, 7 o'clock here at the church. All right? And there will be choir practice Wednesday yep. and uh, men's meeting. Uh, we'll, we'll have our men's meeting at 7.30 like we usually do, so I invite you in for 
uh, that, guys, and, and we'll be doing all of our final prep for the Beast Feast and all that tonight before we start our study. All right. Now, who had a birthday? <laughs> don't run, Brenda, don't run. You had a birthday.
beginnings. We come today to be reminded of God's love for us. Like the green shoots of renewed life stirring beneath the soil, we welcome an awakening of God's word in our lives. In this time of reflection and repentance, we affirm our identity, we claim our security as children of God.
your spirit into this place this morning, that it would fill every space that we have here and fill our hearts, Lord. And I just pray that um, whatever Pastor Jeff has for his message this morning, that it would touch each one of us in a special way. And that we would take that that we learn and take it out into our world this week. And I just pray for just a supernatural bravery that we would share your word and share um, just your saving grace and that we would um, do what we can to help others uh, be led to you. I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, kids, come on up.
You could tell them about Jesus Christ and how he died on the cross and help them pray. Why do we want to pray for them and with them? Why? Why do we want to do that? If they don't believe in him, why do you want them to believe in him? Why do you want them to be Christians? What? So they can go to heaven. So they can go to heaven! God, isn't it? You betcha. So when you learn something about God, don't leave it here at church. Take it out and share it with somebody else. I have something here I want to show you, but I hope this is going to work. Okay, what I need you to do is make a, a circle. You make a circle for me. Can we start over here and make a circle? Like stand behind each other and show you. I know, but you can't say anything about it. Everybody stand up. Nope, not even close. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. We have to make a circle. We have to make a circle. Make a circle. Make a circle. Make a circle. I have sort of have one. I sort of have a circle. Grab the hand of somebody next to you. Grab a hand of somebody next to you. Here, come here. I need somebody in here. Between Emma and me. We have everybody have a hand? All right. I need you to take the other hand. Okay. I'm going to hold Emma's hand, but I'm going to put this in between. I want you to watch what happens. I see your she. Can you hold it right now? Everybody hold the hands? Everybody has to hold hands. Everybody has to hold hands. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Look what happens when we share God's love with other people. But you know what? If somebody doesn't share God's love with somebody else, we have to share God's love with everybody we know because we want Oh, 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 everybody hold hands. Everybody hold hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dash, can you put your card out? Oh, there you go. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? So if you have got to share God's love, all right? You just can't do it any other way. Well, you can come back after Sunday school, okay? All right.
joys and concerns. Lord, we just come to you very thankful for your presence in our life. Lord, uh, what an encouragement and a lesson for life that the seasons are. And uh, while we here feel, believe it's been a long winter for us, it really hasn't. It's about perspective. And even in the midst of trying times, whether it has to do with the weather and the seasons or the seasons of our life that we find ourselves in, your presence is there to encourage us and to bring hope that we may know that you are with us in the midst of whatever we're going through. So we thank you for that. We pray and ask that you would be with these requests that have been made here um, this morning. We lift Clint before you. Lord, he's become our in-house traveling evangelist. And we pray and ask that you would use him mightily for the deliverance of Lord, we pray and ask that you would fill him with your holy unction and that hearts would be open and receptive to the word that you've laid upon his heart. Lord, we lift Randy before you and we ask that you would just uh, minister your healing touch as the great physician to his shoulder as, as the surgery came to completion and though it was more than anticipated, Lord, we pray and ask that you would make your presence known to him spiritually and physically, Lord, that he may recover. And, uh, and even though the road may seem long, Lord, we pray and ask that you would uh, just draw near and bring him comfort, Lord, and help him with the pain and the recuperation process. Lord, we lift Verna and Jeannie before you and we ask that you would uh, minister to them and their body, Lord. And uh, and we just ask that you would uh, help them to get through these, these viruses that they're experiencing, Lord. We pray and ask that you would uh, minister to them and to those around them, Lord. Uh, we pray and ask for their healing and protection. Lord, we ask that you would be with the Delk family, Lord, be with the Robbins family. We pray and ask that even in the midst of this tragedy, the loss of a house, that uh, from the ashes can rise an opportunity for them. And Lord, we just uh, lift them before your throne and ask that you would minister healing emotionally and Lord, that you would uh, help them in the recovery process. Lord, we've been praying for Daniel for several months now. We pray and ask that you would uh, now open a door for him to experience uh, a new calling upon his life vocationally. Lord, uh, we ask that you would uh, speak to his heart, draw near to him. May he have a, a new awareness of your presence and your love and your purpose for his life, Lord. We ask that you would just uh, help him to heal, not only physically, but emotionally from the setback that he is experiencing. And we, uh, we pray and ask that you would, uh, you would just bring around him people of faith that can... Uh, continue to draw him uh, to your presence, Lord. Because you don't have the answers to life. You are the answer to life. And we pray and ask that you would, uh, you would in the midst of all of his questioning be the final answer for him. So we're going to trust you for the outcome. Lord, for the unspoken requests that are without doubt being lifted before your throne, we pray and ask that you would hear the heart's cry of each and every one here. Lord, everyone in this room, myself included, have a need that only you 
and fulfill. We have shortcomings that only you can build up. And Lord, we have in our life, every one of us, a desire to go our own way and to do things in our own fashion. We pray and ask that you would help us to every day submit to your will and to your lordship in our life. And I pray and ask that you would draw us closer to you, that we might be vessels of noble purpose in your household to bring others to the saving knowledge of your son, Jesus Christ. Now we ask that you be with us throughout the rest of the service. Lord, open up our hearts and uh, just let us be focused on all that you have for us today. We thank you for the uh, beautiful day you've given us yesterday. We pray and ask that you would be the sunshine of our souls, even in those dark moments, Lord, that your sun would shine through. And we'll be quick to praise you for that. As we go throughout this week, help us to be bright and shining lights for you. And we'll be quick to praise you for that. Remind us to be mindful to pray as you taught the disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, it's time for our special this morning. I was kind of wondering if Kevin remembered to do that before he left. He did. He Kevin did? reminded right. me a few weeks ago, and then I saw a picture on Facebook last night that they're in Denver, and that reminded me that <laughs> I had the special, so... I'm still working on trying to get my future wife to get up and sing in front of us all, but that hasn't happened yet, so I have come up with a short uh, YouTube video to play, basically that gives a good explanation of Lent and the uh, mindset that we need to be in these next days ahead.
please stand with me now for the reading of God's word. We'll be reading from Acts 22, 2 through 16. When they heard him speak to them in Aramaic, they became very quiet. Then Paul said, I am a Jew born in Tarsus of Silica, but brought up in this city. I studied under Gamaliel and was thoroughly trained in the law of our ancestors. I was just as zealous for God as any of you are today. I persecuted the followers of this way to their death, arresting both men and women and throwing them into prison as a high priest and all the council can themselves testify. I even obtained letters from them to their associates in Damascus and went there to bring these people as prisoners to Jerusalem to be punished. About noon, as I came near Damascus, suddenly a bright light from heaven flashed around me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice say to me, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord, I asked. I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting, he replied. My companions saw the light, but they did not understand the voice of him who was speaking to me. What shall I do, Lord, I asked. Get up, the Lord said, and go to Damascus. There you will be told all that you have to be assigned to do. My companions led me by the hand into Damascus, because the brilliance of the light had blinded me. A man named Ananias came to see me. He was a devout observer of the law and highly respected by all the Jews living there. He stood beside me and said, Brother Saul, receive your sight. <coughs> and at that very moment, I was able to see him. Then he said, The God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will and to see the righteous one and to hear words from his mouth. You will be his witness to all people of what you have seen and heard. And now what are you waiting for? Get up and be baptized and wash your sins away, calling on his name. And all God's people said, Amen. I'm going to ask a couple of volunteers to help me with my props. Uh, if I could get a couple of guys and just bring bring out the, uh, uh, what's it called, whiteboard. And if I could get a couple of volunteers that would be willing to just pass these out to everyone. This is what we did last week. I, I put them down on notes for you uh, so that those of you who weren't here can kind of keep up with the conversation. Those of you who weren't, were here, you could review, have something to review. Because we're talking about... Uh, Evangelism, the sharing of our faith. And the sharing of our faith is uh, something that most people aren't comfortable with. They don't, they're not, most people don't feel skilled at it, I should say. They feel a little inadequate. They get nervous. And, uh, and I understand that. Everybody gets nervous uh, when you start venturing into this area where faith is, thank you guys, where faith is shared. Uh, and so, last week, we had a, a kind of a group think here. I asked, um, do you, we have to first understand what we're sharing. When we share our faith, what is it that we're sharing with people? And you guys, those that were here, came up with this list of things. What are we sharing when we share our faith? We're sharing eternal life. That's what Brenda got the kids all excited about, you know, that, that was cool. And uh, because we want people to go to heaven. We want everybody to go to heaven. But it's not just about us recognizing that God loves us. That is a, a teaching in the church that's becoming more and more apparent. It's just all we have to do is know that God loved us. And there's more to it than that. I know that my wife loves me. I know that. But for me to really experience the depth and the impact and the profound uh, uh, impact that her love will have on me, I have to respond to it. I have to accept it. There are people who reject. They are in marriage and their spouse loves them. They try to show love to them. They try to say things that are loving to them. They try to show their love. They try to give their love. And yet, there are times when that love is rejected, isn't it? Okay, y'all awake, right? You've had coffee. I've only got about that much left in my cup, or I'd share it. You just pass it around. 
And so we love people. We want everybody to go to heaven. And that is what we're doing when we share our faith, is we're giving them opportunity to establish a new address. To establish a new place of residence when they leave this life. And experience. We're going to talk about that but today, but we share our experience. We, we share with them God's love. Why did Jesus die on the cross? The Bible says in Romans, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He, there's no doubt about His love for mankind. But what do we do? We have to respond to that sacrifice of love. We have to respond to it. The gift of salvation is free if we will just accept it. But we have to accept it. And so we want to share with them God's love. We want them to know who Jesus is, y'all said. That He is the Savior. He's the one who died for our sins. He is God incarnate. We want them to understand sin and redemption. There has to be a recognition that I for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Right? That's what Romans tells us. Romans chapter 6 says, for the wages of sin is what? Yeah. But the gift of God is? Eternal life. And it goes right back there to heaven. Eternal life. And so we, we have to help people understand that concept. And then there's one other thing that we want them to understand. That they're a new creation. Corinthians chapter 5 says uh, in verse 17, uh, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creation. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. new. And so there's an opportunity for new life. There's an opportunity for transformation. And not just an opportunity to say, oh well, you know, some people say, well, I like the whole idea about going to heaven. I like that idea. But I, I really don't want to be transformed. I'm not, I, you know. <laughs> Listen, when a baby is born, they like the idea of, and you can see this, and trust me, I know, I have three grandsons that I spend a lot of time with here lately. They like the idea of having things done for them. <laughs> Don't they, Denise? But a part of the maturing process is transformation. It's transformation. They like, people, everybody likes the idea of being able to go to heaven. I used to say this. And I meant it in a, in a very profound and spiritual way. Everybody here wants to go to heaven. No one wants to die to get there. And I'm not talking about a physical death. I'm talking about a spiritual death. There has to be a letting go of the lordship that we demonstrate in our own lives. And we have to accept the lordship of, of Jesus Christ in us. There are a lot of people who want Him as their Savior, but they're just not ready for Him to be Lord. And if He is not your Lord, He's not your Savior. Okay? And so, we, we kind of came up with those things. And so we must allow the presence of the Holy Spirit to radiate from us. Jesus said that when the Holy Spirit comes on them in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall be my witnesses. And so... As, as you and I both know, we, we cannot, I cannot save anybody. Spiritually, I can't save anybody. That is not within my power. All I can do is share with them the one who can. And that is where people get kind of get a little uptight about it. And so, uh, what I want to do is I want to put it in, in a little bit different terms today than, than what you've thought about it before. Uh, we, yeah, we got, I got this from downstairs. So I'm going to try to... This, you, gotta, you guys got to understand, I am putting on a hat that I am not comfortable wearing. Writing on a whiteboard, doing that kind of thing. Uh, 
That is not. I, I tried to do the clicker thing a few times, haven't we, Tori? It just doesn't work. I forget to click. And if I let him click, he never knows where I'm going. Because there is a miraculous thing that takes place from what I've written to what is preached. There is a, a wide variety that takes place in between. I call that the working of the Holy Spirit. You can call it what you want, but I call it the working of the Holy Spirit. And so, in this passage that we looked at, there is something very key. Paul, when you when Tina read that, you some of you were hearing things that you completely have heard before. This is just a story. Paul, what's Paul doing? Understand, let's lay the groundwork. We're at the end of the book of Acts. Paul, the book of Acts is, is the New Testament history book. And it, the book of Acts lays out all of these missionary journeys of Paul, the, the birth of the church and how Peter went and, and, and ministered in the, the Jewish community. And then Paul, uh, God set up Paul to go into the Gentile world, world and to lead the Gentiles to faith in Christ Jesus. And so we get down here to Acts chapter 22. Paul finds himself going back to Jerusalem. God sends him back to Jerusalem. And it's not with it's kind of a Jonah moment because uh, Paul, in this vision that he has, and God speaks to him and says, Depart, get up, and go to Jerusalem. And Paul says, Now hold it. If I go to Jerusalem, I have been imprisoned in every synagogue I've been in on all my missionary journeys for going in and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. If I go to Jerusalem, they're going to kill me. That's basically, that's a paraphrase, but that's basically what he says to Paul. And God says, yeah, get up and go. <laughs> Wouldn't you love to hear that one? Yeah, I know. You, you've been, yeah, get up, go. And so Paul, being the obedient servant, because Jesus is Lord of his life, Paul gets up, goes to Jerusalem, he gets to Jerusalem, and he delivers this message. And they're good with it. They're good with Paul's testimony. He shares, now as he shared that story, you'll recognize that is the story of his experience, how he came to know Jesus. And that is the key for most people. Jesus in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he tells the disciples, he says, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power and you will be my witnesses, my witnesses. And so here is the thing that I want everybody to understand uh, this morning. And that is, how do you work all of this? Now, you've got the notes there from last week. All of those things that we said that we're sharing when we share our faith, that should be out of our experience. I cannot be a witness to something that I never experienced or observed myself. Right? Right? Now, my wife loves it when I come home and I share and tell a story. Because if you haven't, if you haven't figured it out yet, uh, I grew up in an oral tradition. My mother shared everything with me, not by writing it down, but by putting it in a story that captivated me. And so... Uh, I am a storyteller. <clears throat> and, and there are great things. Just to give you, for instance, I came home and I was sharing with her last night. Fred and I went out. And I love Fred. Fred uh, has a great testimony. Fred has a great testimony. We went out and went shopping yesterday, didn't we, Fred? Get some stuff with Beast Beast. We were in Academy. I'm going to say this. I'm going to use this as an illustration if Fred doesn't like it. He could beat me over the head with his arm. Uh, but we went out, we were in the Academy Sports, we're just talking and walking through, looking for stuff that we can pick up for prizes for the Beast Street, some more prizes. And, uh, and one, of the, one of the workers, he goes, you guys doing okay? Can I help you? And Fred, without missing a beat, says, yeah, I lost my arm. Could you help me find it? <laughs> Isn't that great? I told that to Don. I got home. I said, I love friends. <laughs> that guy. Oh. <laughs> he turns and walks down. 
<laughs> we meet him a little later, and Fred, you know, he's just joking with him, and, and the guy kind of recovered from it, and, and talking, but, but, you know, he broke that ice. The guy was then comfortable with talking to Fred. You guys looking for anything in particular? Oh yeah, we're trying to find. Fred went on and told him we're trying to find some stuff for beast beast for a dinner that we're putting on. And, but you see, Fred can do that. He puts it. He's accepted the things that have happened in his life, and he puts it into his life. That's a part of his story of how God saved his life, where he could have been killed. And if you ever get an opportunity to talk to Fred about that experience, he talks about, you know, waking up in the hospital wondering if he's in heaven. That's, if that's the first thing that you think of when you wake up, you've got a good relationship with Jesus. If that's, he didn't, he didn't wake up saying, whoa, I wonder if this is hell. It wasn't hot. <laughs> <laughs> See? That's part of the story. And so sharing our faith is really, don't call it, if, if it works better for you, uh, call it share, sharing your story. Oh, look, see, I, good thing I brought this up already. Brenda, don't look. All you teachers, don't look. I'm, but it's really sharing your story. When we, in fact, we phrased that that way last week. Sharing your faith. How did you come to faith in Christ Jesus? And that's where it gets a little uncomfortable. The reason I chose this passage was because Paul, when he shared the gospel, even in a hostile crowd, he started from his own experience. This is how I came to know Jesus. I was walking down a road, minding my own business. I was just doing what he felt was right. Paul was a Pharisee. He was actually persecuting the church unto death, he says. He was killing Christians. I'm walking down the road, doing my religious good thing, minding my own business, and boom, a light appears, and I fall to the ground, and I hear the voice of one saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus. Now we, I'll be honest with you, I didn't, I didn't have that experience. I didn't see a bright light. I didn't fall down. But I have a story. Let me ask you this. I want you to take a moment and think about it. What is your story? How did you come to Jesus? How did you come to faith in Jesus? For it is by grace we've been saved through faith. If we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, believe that He died on the cross and that on the third he was buried, and on the third day rose again, we're saved. That is what the scriptures tell us. And Paul goes on in Romans chapter 10 to say, listen, how can they be saved if there's not someone there to tell them? How can they come to faith in Christ Jesus, and how can they believe if they've never heard about what Jesus did at Calvary. And so then Paul goes on to quote the, the psalm writer who says, beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Listen, we're not delivering people, we're not delivering to people religion. Did you hear me? Do we get that on TV? If you're watching on TV, understand something. We are not inviting people to a religion. We are inviting people into a relationship. With Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The second person of the tree. I don't care what title you want to give Him. Because He's deserving of them all. 
But what we are inviting people to is not a religion. We are inviting them into a relationship for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That whosoever is me. It's you. It's everyone out there who has a, a life of their own. He didn't come into the world. He goes on to say in verse 17 in John chapter 3, He didn't come into the world to condemn it. See, that's where religion always gets the, the, the mixed up. Is that we, we put on people... Now, understand something. Everybody's got to have boundaries. But God has laid down His boundaries in His Word. I don't need to add to them. I can remember uh, when I was when we were first married. I traveled with a band, and uh, we went into a lot of different churches, a lot of different churches. And there were a lot of churches we couldn't get into. You know why? Because we had, I mean, I wore glasses then. If you wore wire rimmed glasses, you couldn't come to our church. What? <laughs> Serious? Yeah. Don knows. If you parted your hair down the middle, you couldn't come into our church. Had a young man walk through the door, had on a pair of jeans, nice button-up shirt, a tie. Ushers wouldn't let him into the sanctuary. You got jeans on. And don't don't get down on the church. There's every organization out there that is controlled by man. That is, hear me, that is controlled by man that puts down these obligations. I'll just tell you, that is why you've heard me preach time and time again. That this is the authority. This has to be the authority of the church of Jesus Christ. What this says, I believe. Now I know with some people they say, well, Jeff, that's awful simplistic. But we understand, you're redneck. And, and that is about where you're at. The Word of God has set down not only a moral boundary for me, we find that in the Ten Commandments, but also some spiritual boundaries. It is set a, God has set some expectations for His people. <laughs> for His people, that you and I, they're not hard, they're not difficult. Uh, in light of, now get me, in light of our relationship with Him, But the church then, understand something. The struggle that Jesus had with the Pharisees and the Sadducees was they came along and added about 625 other laws on top of the Levitical law that we find in the book of Leviticus. And there's some good stuff in the book of Leviticus. I know if you read through it, it's going to put you to sleep. That's your first thing. Boy, this is just... But you have to dig a little deeper. The Bible is, is like, uh, and, and forgive me if this offends you, but you'll get over it. Or you won't. But the Bible is designed for you and I to dig into. It is like those movies, Raiders of the Lost Ark. There is treasure down here, but we have to get to it. We have to dig a little bit. Modern man, modern Christians... They want the treasure right at the top. Don't have to dig. I don't have, I don't have to waste my time. I don't have to spend time in the Word studying it. It's right there at the top. That's not the way God created, created it for us to dig. And if you dig, you'll find out that there's some good treasure in there. So what is your story? How do you share your story? You have to share it in light, your story, in light of all those things that we've listed there. Now you've got a list before you. What is your story about how you came to Jesus? I'm going to come over to your house. I am a lost person. I am a person that doesn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. How do you then share your story? I come to your house. You invite me over for dinner. 
And I, which you can do that even if I'm not lost. Do I look like I turn away food? I don't think so. <laughs> but I come over and I sit down and you, I say, you know what? Your life, you just got it all together, Dan. I, 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 I want to live like you. I want that life. Brenda, you're so together. What, what's your secret? Man, I tell you what, if you've got people that ever said that to you, that is God serving you up in tennis. You know, that perfect boom. That's a smash hit right there. That is a no-brainer. Have you ever had people ask you that? Come on. In some way, shape, or form, somebody has said to you at one time in your life, I admire you. That is the opportunity. That is the crack in the door that you need to put your foot through and say, let me, let me share with you. You want to know how my life is together? My life was a mess. And you can tell them what your life was like before Jesus. And if you say, well, my life wasn't much different before I met Jesus. I had things together. I was able to put together lists. That's just some people's personality. These two ladies right up here, Brenda and my wife, I bet you they're the biggest list takers, makers in the world. Do, you, do I look like a list maker to you? Only list I make is what we're going to buy for groceries. It's an important list. There's some people, that's just their personality type. I'm talking about you have an opportunity here to tell them what Jesus had done spiritually and emotionally in your life before you met Him. I know of people that before they met Jesus, all they did was worry about something. They all, their, their life was one big worry. I know people who, who, before they met Jesus, they were rough as a cob. I mean, they were just rough, rough, rough. And then, as they came to know the Lord, they began to soften. I shared with you a time or two, uh, maybe here, about Jerry, the guy that came to, to Christ in my church in Michigan. And when he walked in, he looked like Thor. All you ladies are like, yeah. <laughs> he had long blonde hair, didn't he? And he, he did cement work by himself. This guy stood about that tall. He had arms about that big. And his shoulders to his waist. I remember the first time he grabbed my hand and shook it. I thought it got eaten by a gator. It just disappeared. Jerry was invited to church by one of our guys who had been working with him on a construction project. He came to church the first time. Now, I will seek your forgiveness now. And if you are offended, then you've got an issue. But I am going to share with you what Jerry said at the end of the service. As everybody was filing, that's back when everybody filed out one door. There's one door in, one door out. And everybody was greeting, and we had a very loving church just like this, and everybody was greeting. And Jerry walked in, and the demeanor on his face was one of just softness. He just looked at me with those soft eyes and that big frame, and he grabbed my hand, and he pulled me in close to him, and he said, that's the best damn sermon I've ever heard in my life. I told you I'd ask for your forgiveness. The Lord has given it to me many a time. Jerry came to know Jesus as he saved him. Jerry started coming to church every Sunday. Jerry started, started working with our children's church ministry. And I remember the day 
that I announced to the church that I would be moving to Kansas. That God had called me to another station. <coughs> Jerry got a hold of me. We went out for breakfast at like 6 in the morning because those guys start early. And we went to the Thorn Apple Kitchen. Little restaurant. Just a few tables in it. You could sit the whole restaurant in that section of pews right there. And he sat down and he looked at me across the table. And Jerry, who was this rough, tough, concrete-laying guy, strong as an ox, had those sunglasses that wrap around, you know, how they look real cool. He put them up on his head like that. And I can still remember him reaching across the table and putting his hand on mine and squeezing and saying, what am I going to do when you leave? I said, Jerry, God's going to take care of you. Because when one shepherd has to leave, he always provides another. You see, you got to have a story. you got to know your story. Every one of you have a story, but do you know it? I've been criticized for sharing my stories too often. Sharing my father's story. He didn't ever get an opportunity to share his story because he battled cancer. I feel that is where the power of Jesus Christ resides. Is not just in not just in the power of this book and the truths that are in it, but how the truth principles in this book translate into my life and how they translate out of my life into the lives of others. That is what we're called to. And so when you're sharing your faith, you've got to, first of all, know your story. Some, some of you in here have dramatic stories. Some of you... Not so much. That's okay. It's your story. When, when people say, I want to be like you, how did you get your life all together? You share your story. Jesus brought me to this place. I encountered Jesus. Jesus changed the way I think. Jesus changed the way I act. The thing we do, if you have to use anything, use that. But you have to know your story. And it has to be Your words. <coughs> it has to be your words. <coughs> this week, I want, I want, I'm going to give you an assignment. Write down your story. Write down your story. <coughs> and then if you would do me a favor, send it to me. Now, some of you say, I don't want to do that. You don't have to. It's not like they're getting graded on it. <laughs> Every student in school likes to hear those words come out of the teacher's mouth. Well, you don't have to. It's not like you're getting graded on it. Great, I'll go out and play ball after school. <laughs> but if you, if you seriously want to enhance your ability to share your faith with other people, you have to know how that faith got into your heart. It may have been a class. It may have been a service like this. It may have been when the pastor asked you to stand and raise your hand and you asked Jesus into your heart. It may have been at home while you were reading the Bible. It may have been while you're walking, well, not walking, driving down the street in your car and you're listening to Caleb or you're flirting with the stations on the, on the radio. It may have been a TV preacher late at night when you couldn't sleep. It may have been on a radio late at night when you're driving and you're just scanning the radio to keep yourself awake and some, something caught your ear and it resonated within you. It may have been somebody intentionally came up and shared their faith with you. Larry goes to the, to the state fair and 
passes out tracks and has conversations. I love to hear Larry's stories about conversations he has, especially with young people when he starts talking to them. Get a hold of Larry. He'll share some stories with you. And they may not come to Jesus right then and there with Larry. But when they walk away saying, you know, I never thought about it that way. We're, we do sow seeds. Paul says himself, he says, Paul plants, I water, Peter reaps. Here's something, and I'll share this with you, and then we'll close. Steve Wingfield of Wesley Evangelist used to come to the, to the revival services, uh, our camp meetings, every now and then. He'd say this. Now, this is, what sh this is worth writing down. If you have reaped and not sown, thank God for those who sowed before you. If you have reaped for Jesus Christ and never sown the seed, thank God for those who have sown before you. We are called just to share our story. We cannot make people follow Jesus. But we can put on display our relationship with Him so that people are envious and they want it. You see, this, this relationship we have with Jesus isn't meant to be just held to ourselves. It's meant to be put on display. That is why I always use my relationship with my wife. I love her. I want you all to know I love her. I want the people at Walmart when we're walking through Walmart to know I love her. I wear t-shirts that say I love my wife. I have little stickers on the back of my truck. I love my wife. I had some guys from Texas drive past me and I saw one taking his picture of the little sticker on the back of my truck. That relationship is on display. I want my relationship with Jesus Christ to be on display just as much as that. So that when people look at me, they say, you know what, that guy likes Jesus. No, no, that guy loves Jesus. You guys are the greatest weapon that God has in this world. You are the greatest tool to change and transform the world for Jesus Christ. And it all starts not with a formula, not with a special magic wand like Harry Potter. It doesn't start with a, 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 anything else but knowing your story and sharing it in light of your faith in Jesus Christ. It can be as natural as falling off a log. That's what it should be. I love Bill Gaither. You guys know that. I was thinking about this this week. And there's a line in a song that he wrote. If you could see where Jesus brought me from to where I am today, then you would know the reason why I love him so. God loves you. Yes. God Send His Son to die on the cross for your sin and my sin. Yay. We accept that gift of His salvation and we have eternal life. Yeah. And now we are being transformed into His likeness. Woohoo! What is not to share about that? What is there to be ashamed of? Not a thing. Know your story. <clears throat> Share your story. And allow people <clears throat> to enjoy it. And you say, well, Jeff, I shared my story and nothing happened. Says you. <laughs> Says you. God asks us to share our story. Sow the seed. Somebody else will bring along the water. And he'll do the reaping. Stand. <laughs> Since Jesus came into my heart, that we get to finish.
I told you I'd have you out of here before then. <laughs> True to my word, people. Since Jesus came into my heart, love this song, love the words, sing it like you own it, because you do. If you've asked Jesus into your heart, this can be one of your anthems. Since Jesus came into your heart, what has happened? Has life become easier? Not necessarily. But I tell you what, it's easier to cope. He doesn't say He'll take all of our problems away from us, but He does say He'll be there through all of life's problems. That's what I like. Let's sing this together. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 